Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis. That means it don't matter if it's to the upside or to the downside. All we care about is our P&L and we use the price action to trade it up, down, it don't matter as long as it gets us green. Remember guys, the bill collectors, they don't care if you got your money bullishly or bearishly. They only care that you paid your bills, okay? So, what happened today, okay? So, Uncle Charles was watching that 570 level. If you guys watched this morning's video, or even in my previous video, you know 570 uh, was a level that I was watching, and I wrote in my Discord. I wrote in my Discord. It was beautiful right here. I'm overall bullish above 570, but bulls need to clear 572 to put those higher targets in play. We look at the charts here. Did it clear 572? This is my 572 level right there. Did it clear 572? No, it didn't. It actually rejected from 572. Okay? And I wrote, if 570 fails, last week's recapture is in trouble putting 568 and possibly 565 in play. And I wrote again in new time, noon time. Noon time on Eastern time. Because look at Spy was just chopping between the 572 level and bouncing off the 570 level. And I mentioned to my group that it's chopping between the 570 level to the 572 level. Watch for the breakout or breakdown of the range. Okay. I wrote here. If 570 fails on the 15 to 30 minute chart. 568 to 566 for 5 and 565 are in play. Okay, and I wrote if it doesn't close below 570 on the 15 to 30 minute chart, then it doesn't count as a breakdown. So we need it, and I told my group we need the breakdown of 570 on the 15 to 30 minute chart. This is the 15 minute chart, guys, and we can see here the breakdown of 570. This yellow line right here. I could change it to green. That's the 570 level. So it sticks out to you. That green line is the 570 level, guys. Look at how it broke down 570 on the 15-minute chart. We can move up to the 30-minute chart. You can see how it broke down on the 30-minute chart. We can keep going to the one-hour chart. I, I think you guys get the picture. But the thing is, when you look at it from the one-hour chart, you know, it's a big old breakdown. Where do you enter on the one-hour chart? It's difficult. That's why I go down to a 30 minute or a 15 minute chart. You can see on the 15 minute chart, breakdown of 570 and boom. Beautiful move to the downside. Got the breakdown of 570, which was a fib level. Broke down the 5 DMA. We, we went almost testing the 20 DMA. Okay. So once again, we got the head and shoulder pattern. Left shoulders right there. Okay, left shoulders right there, right shoulders right there. Okay, let me change this trend line to blue. Okay, and then the head right there. Okay, so you guys can see left shoulder, right shoulder, the head. Where is the neckline? 565. So now that we broke down the 570 level, now that we broke down the 5 DMA. That's a good start for the bears for this pattern to play out. We got the 20 DMA, which is probably going to creep up to 566.5, which is one of my support levels. And of course, the 565 level, which is the neckline. If 566.5 and 565 fail as support tomorrow, guys, I am bearish. I am bearish on the spy. Okay, loss of this 570 is a red flag against the bulls. But, okay, but... We don't call bottoms here. Now that we almost retested the 20 DMA, SPY can possibly put in a higher low compared to uh, last Wednesday's low. All right. If that is the case, I will only trust it if 568 and 570, especially 570, recapture. If it does, I would look to long above 570. That is when I would look to long and we could head back up 572, 573.6, 575, and so on. Okay. Remember, we got to identify the bull case scenario and the bear case scenario so that we can look to react and make our PL green.
like I said, bear case, break down 566.5 and 565, broke, break those down, then I would look to short. If we clear 568 and recapture 570, I am looking to long or buy calls with those higher targets in play. Okay. Triple Q, beautiful trading with Triple Q, but let's just get to the daily chart. Pullback time. Okay. It closed right around my 482 level. Okay. We also have a potential head and shoulder pattern for Triple Q as well. I have the neckline at 578.7. So from here, it got to break down 482, 480.5, and 478.7. Below 478.7, breakdown of the neckline, I would definitely be bearish. Okay? Today, uh, resistant, if it can stay above 42, is 43.5 and 485 to put 47 back in play. Above 487 is only when the head and shoulder pattern is invalidated. If we clear 47... There's no point or no reason to talk about the head and shoulder pattern anymore because it's invalidated. But right now, it still have a shot at more downside. Like I said, got to break down those support levels. And if it does, bearish. But if we recapture 43.5, 45, and clear 47, I can't really say that I am bearish. I would be bullish, actually. Uh, let me get to Tesla. Tesla, we got the breakout of the multi month trend line guys okay you guys can see the green line started back from june 20th high connects to august 26 high with the third touch at september 26 all right now we got the first official breakout of this down trend line we had three tests breakout mode as long as above 125 i am bullish on nvda had a lot of people telling me that nvda is bearish but NVDA just keeps on going up, okay? I'm going to follow the price action. Okay, guys, don't argue with the price action. A lot of people like to do that. You guys are going to get humbled by the market. Be humble so you don't got to get humbled. You understand? If we are going to get bearish, the price action has to confirm it. 127 and 125 has to break down, especially 125 to give us a false breakout of the multi-month trend line false breakout setup is bearish and below so below 125 i would lean bearish once again on nvda otherwise we're in breakout mode clearing 128.5 and 130 would be bullish to put 131.5 in play which is a fib level and if that level clears we are heading a lot higher possibly all the way up to 136 and maybe even at 140 plus okay here is tesla beautiful trading with tesla Tesla was super awesome. And you guys can see on Tesla, uh, I had a 248 level. Broke down 248 right there and it just kept on going. It was beautiful. Anyways, let's get to the daily chart for Tesla. Yeah, it looks bearish to me. If it can break down 240 tomorrow, uh, 237 fib level would definitely be in play. And if 237 fails, guys, we could drop a lot lower. Probably back to the mid-220s, like 226.5, 225 area. Of course, we have to take it level by level. So 237 fails, then 235, uh, 232.6s would be target, 230 would be targets, okay? But we need to lose 240 and 237 for that to be possible. If we are going to get a bounce, then 242, 244 must recapture to put 246, 248, 250 in the FIB level at 252 in play okay i would be bullish above 252 and taking a look at crowd here crwd i got my eyes on crowd it has it's looking bearish to me right now but for bearish confirmation you know i need that setup i need the bearish setup so potential keyword potential lower high okay to confirm that it's a lower high i need to see support level fail tomorrow i have support at 287 and 285.7 if those levels fail bearish look to short with 281 uh, 278 and 276.5 ish in play okay but we got to break down 287 and 285.7 to be bearish to be bullish i would like to see a breakout of this down trend line okay so 28 uh two, i got resistant at 290 and 291.6 if 290 and 291.6 clear 
that is bullish with 296 or higher in play. We could go back and hit the big 300. Okay, so that's CRWD CrowdStrike. All right, let's take a look at the dog pool levels. Dog pool levels are the the whales, uh, institution stuff like that. The people with the big money. Okay, it could be. For all we know, it could this could be Elon Musk. It could be Tesla. Okay, the point is it's big money players. Okay, institution, the banks. It could be any any one of them. It doesn't tell us who. But what it does tell us is how much money, which is over 1.4 billion in premium, how much money they're moving and where they're moving it around. So whatever company it is that was holding SPY or whatever, they could be either looking to sell or buy at 573, okay? That's what it doesn't tell us is who's buying and who's selling. The point is about knowing these dog pool levels that we know that that is where the big money players are getting uh busy okay that's where they're giving us activity so we see on today's dog pool is that the big money players are getting busy uh, busy around the 573 level so somebody's buying at 573 and somebody's also selling at 573 okay we also had an order of 2.8 billion in premium at 577.59 and just one set below that at 567.58 was 940 mil. So that's over 300 bill, billion around that order. That's a significant level, 567.58 to 59. So we know big money players are either buying or selling around that level. So what do we do with these levels? As a price action trader, I treat it just like any other pivot levels. Okay, break down to 573 bearish if you get above 573 bullish and a lot of times these dog pool levels are different from my levels that i get uh purely from the charts okay and that's okay for me i'm a price action trader i like to know what all the important levels are and to know where the big money players are getting busy i think that's pretty uh important information okay so for me as a price action trader who loves to trade using levels dog pool levels is something that I really love to use. Okay, and that and I pay for this, guys. This is not free. Cheddar Flow is not free, guys. I pay for this and I share with you guys for free because I love you guys and I hope you guys choose me as your mentor one of these days. But anyways, so that's what I got for spy. Triple Q 487.58 is where 71% of activity came from. So what do we do with that information? We use it as a pivot level. So to be bullish, I like to see 47.5 recapture. Now I said based on the charts that it would need to get above 487 uh, to cancel the head and shoulder pattern. But if you really look at the charts, you know, you really look at the chart right around 47.7 ish to 8 ish from September 25th and October 4th. That's where the shoulders are. It's right around where the dog pool levels right around there so see see what the significance of it is important okay because you see what big money play with the bank the market makers they're looking at these levels too because there's a lot of money in that area so why not we okay so 47.5 and then the second highest premium which is to over 200 mil was 482 just use them simply use them as support and resistant levels like 42 is one of my levels it's also a dark pool level okay uh, NVDA, simplicity guys, don't overthink it. When you overthink it, you get analysis paralysis. I'm trying to give you guys analysis, but I don't want to give you guys paralysis. Does that make sense? Simplicity, um, yeah, 127.7 is where most of activity is coming in for NVDA. 127.7, gotta get above, stay above that or get above that uh, to be bullish. All right, I'm already bull bullish above 125, but that's just another pivot level. Tesla, 240.83, over 600 million premium. Okay, you can add that level to your chart. Use it as a pivot level. CRWD, let's see if it has anything. Nothing for CrowdStrike. All right, let's see what the flows are showing. Okay, we'll look at 100K premiums or above. Only above the ask. I want the most aggressive play sweeps and out the money. And it's still overall bearish. Amazing. Look at all these puts. 
for October 11th, October 18th for Halloween. Okay, so still we are seeing that the puts are being loaded up. I mean, hey, if you're going to load puts and you have time on it, you might as well do it around all time highs. But yeah, got to combine this information with the price action. Overall bearish once again. Triple Q is bullish though. Interesting. For November 1st, October 10th right here. October 8th, October 8th. So we see in some of these coming in the afternoon calls. So are they expecting a gap up tomorrow? Maybe they think today was a bear trap. I don't know. But definitely more calls than puts for Triple Q. NVDA. Bullish. Okay. Bullish. A lot of these calls though, they came in the morning, which I'm sure they made some good money. But this put came in the end of the day to enter around 128.5. I don't know if they're up on anything, but um, yeah, more calls than puts for sure. And Tesla, Tesla's bearish. Not much, not much. Only one contract here. 240 strike for October 11th. See if crowd has anything. Crowd strike, nothing. Nothing, guys. And, uh, well, there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching and, and checking out my YouTube channel. It really means a lot. If Hopefully, I'm able to earn your subscription, you know, for you guys to subscribe to me or hit the like button or even join the Discord. Hopefully, I earn it, okay? I do my best. been doing this for years, trying to serve the community that I love. That's, you know, what better way to live, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, there you have it. Thank you, guys. Peace.